tap, uh, type in where you guys are calling in from, uh, type in where you guys are calling in from. I'm super excited for today's call. Type in where you all are calling in from. I mean, I'm super excited, like I said, about today's call. So type it in, type it in, type it in. You know, just uh, go ahead and, and in, invite a friend as well. It's always a beautiful thing to have you guys join on on the Leadership Summit. So I'm super excited about today's call, everyone. Just go ahead and show some love. Um, if you're excited, if you're fired up, if you're joyful, go ahead and put some, some ones in the chat. I know some of you guys might be uh, on YouTube. Some people might be on Clubhouse, wherever you guys are calling in from. Just go ahead and show some love in the chat right now. I'm super excited about today's call again. I'm fired up, fired up, fired up. Today is Monday, family. Today is Monday, and it's moving into the second week of May. Could you imagine how fast we're moving, ladies and gentlemen? Can you imagine how fast we're moving? And I'm really super excited about today's call. Now, for those of you who might be just joining us, for those of you who have never been on the Leadership Summit, you know, we have really strategic conversations where we have on the Leadership Summit. We talk about different things. Uh, we talk about uh, world issues. We talk about uh, issues that we face uh, normally. How, how do we get past these issues? Or, you know, how do we elevate in certain areas of our lives? Um, and, and so we really have some real good dialogue with this short talk that we have uh, every Monday. So I always uh, charge people on inviting a friend calling a loved one, tell them, listen, man, I know you're driving home, but you may need this. Or I know you're sitting at home, but uh, turn off that television, go ahead and, 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 and DVR it or whatever, and, and join in on the Mr. Boston's Leadership Summit. So, you know, I, I, I first salute all of you who are joining, but I say, hey, tag a friend and tag a friend and tag a friend, uh, because I think it'll be something that can uh, you can add to your arsenal of information, right? So if you guys are with me, go ahead and type seven in the chat. If you're with me, type seven. For those who are not familiar with whether you're on Zoom or whatever, you can just click and unmute uh, the area to, to really type. Just type some seven. Absolutely. I want to make sure everybody is in here. It's just a lot of love for all of you joining in. I'm fired up, super excited. It's the month of May, guys. And you know, it's an M month. That means it's my birthday month. You know, the birthday was May 1st and I'm celebrating the whole month. That's right. Celebrating with information, with education, just... Uh, so much, so much information and, and I'm fired up. Uh, you know, I, I know for most of you, if you haven't joined before, I said, welcome. Uh, if you have and you're constantly joining on the Leadership Summit, welcome back again for our next uh, power packed uh, Leadership Summit event. Uh, you know, some of you, you might have joined uh, a week or two ago and, and we talked about uh, restoring your image. We talking about restoring character, that broken character, right? We talked about that. And I didn't want to continue to go forward with us without us uh, d diving in to another portion of this. And remember, I told you guys, I said, there's so much information when we're talking about restoring your image that we literally can teach on uh, for, for days, right? Uh, each one of them may have like an hour and a half, two hour topic in where you can have dialogue on, right? Short talks. And, and I find that it's very important <clears throat> for us to understand that how it's very important for us to understand image, right? Now, most of you know me by now. If you've uh, been on these summits, you know that uh, I'm, I'm big on who I serve, right? And it's not to impress upon anyone uh, my beliefs, but I'm big on who I serve. And I always got to give glory to the Most High God on who I serve because how I look at the world, I look at the world in, in such a uh, d d dynamic based on my travels all over the world uh, from an eye spiritually. And I believe it has helped me grow tremendously. So when I am teaching or information I'm receiving, I'm so grateful to always be a student on this journey. And I want to make sure that you guys that are listening in, this is really important for us to look at who we are. So, so take a second and reflect, you know, who am I? You know, I asked this on that, on that topic before. So this is the part two of restoring your image, right? This is the part two. And, 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 and a short recap is we were talking about everyone speak on leadership. Everyone talks about getting ahead. Everyone talks about how well I can do or how well you should be. And what we're, we're growing up, we're hearing, um, be the leader or uh, you need to win or you need to come first. And we're always taught to win, 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 get on top, get on top, get on top. Um, leader, you need to be a leader, not a follower. Don't follow your friends. You need to lead. But see, no one has taught us how 
to fail with our head up. No one has taught us that when we fail, how do we restore that individual, that character? How do we restore that? How do we restore what broken leadership is? So this is, for those who are now joining, this is why I said to you guys, tag a friend and invite a friend, because see, a lot of the time we believe we know, but we haven't been taught that. See, we've just been taught to lead and win. Everyone wants to win. If I say, who wants to win on this call? Everyone, I want to win, right? I'm, I'm, I'm the head, I'm the tail. You know, I like folks who, who like to quote the scriptures. I'm the head, I'm not the tail, right? And no one was taught or no one told us, how do I restore what is lost? How do I get back to that, right? And so we, we were treating, the treatment was on restoring broken image, right? That's what we were discussing a few weeks ago. And I didn't want to go any further without the continuation of diving into some more of this. This is extremely important. Uh, you know, when we left off, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about trust, right? We were talking about it, right? And I, and, and, and I went into, as a recap for most of you, I said, you know, when we're in, the, when we, when we're in failure, I said, how to handle failure? How do we handle failure, right? We talked about that. How do we handle failure? And I, I was saying to you guys, as, as for those who take notes, right? You know, I should have mentioned that to the newbies. I said, guys, get your phone, get your pad, wherever you are, or you record it, and just record or, or take some notes because it is really good for you to have this and, and you can make sense of what you wish to make sense of and you throw out the rest. That's how I tell people. I said, hey, information comes and whatever that will suit you is what you take. And whatever you don't want, then you trash, right? And if you feel that it's all good for you, then you soak it up like a sponge. But you cannot move along life without getting proper information because the information will continue to come but that information that's coming is it for you I want you to hold on to that is that information for you that information is coming so you got to know what do i want coming in because there's so much coming at us what do i want coming in because when it comes it'll come to the conscious mind but then when you make it a repetition ladies and gentlemen then it goes into that subconscious mind, which can either break you or make you. Not say make you or break you, break you or make you. You got to decide. So you got to know what information to take in, right? So we were talking about how to handle failure. And we were talking about falling in leadership is the closing of the account of trust. We talked about that. Just to recap for those who are now following up, right? Falling in leadership is the closing of the account of trust. And I said, uh, what is that trust account? Is people close the account. People close that account. Falling in leadership is the closing of the account. People close that account. When you fail, the people shut it down. When you fail, the people shut it down. That is the account of trust. That's what we were talking about. And, and, and I left off where I said to you guys, I said, you cannot pay for trust. You cannot pray for trust, or you cannot buy nor demand trust. And I re remember asking you guys, I said, so then, so then how do we get trust? I said, trust is what? And somebody typing in the chat for me. Trust is what? If you can't buy it, if you can't pray for it, if you can't demand it, trust is what? How do you get trust? Trust is what? So for the people that's listening, I want to make sure you guys, when we have these dialogue, right? We're, there you go. Absolutely. There goes Sissy. Somebody's listening. That's right. Trust is earned. Trust is earned. Absolutely. For my scholars that's listening, you guys should have your notepads, right? And I told you guys, I said, listen, don't just take the information and say, I'm running back to bring it to my people. Whether you're in an organization of people that you're, you're lifting up, whether you're with a corporate structure, whether you're a, a broker, whatever you are, sometimes get the people on the call so they can hear it when you're hearing it. Get them on the call so they can hear it at the same time because there might be something that someone may pick that you didn't, right? So trust is earned. It is something that the people deposit into your account. The people deposit it into your account. So you got to understand your account of integrity. The more you, the more they get to know you, ladies and gentlemen. So we're talking about this account of trust. The more they get to know you, that 
is when they're giving you the trust. The more they get to know you, the more they start trusting you. This is the process. And we were talking about this, right, ladies and gentlemen? And we left off, I said, trust is the currency of leadership. Trust is the currency of leadership. We left off, we were talking about that. I said, trust is the currency of leadership. And it's the reason why a leader is successful. It's the currency of leadership and it's the reason why a leader is successful. It is not your personality. You guys need to understand that it is not, right? It is not your power. It is not your oratory skills because you got all this knowledge that you believe. It is not your influence. It is not your position. I need you to understand. Trust is the currency of leadership. And the key to your leadership is trust. Maybe somebody needed to hear this today. The key to your leadership is trust. We were talking about that. And this is why I asked. I said, guys, join today because I'm so full of fire right now. I'm so full of fire right now. I've been moving all day and I've just been studying. And I'm like, you know what? I'm so excited to be used. And, and, and I feel like a combustion, a, a combustion chamber that just want to explode with the information that's coming in. And whoever gets to it, whoever take it in, whoever, whoever said, I need a little bit of this, there's going to be something good. You know, it's, it's kind of like uh, you heard that the Messiah was passing through and, and you had an issue, like, like, like according to the text with the woman of the issue of blood. And she said, look, with all that I have done over the many years, all I need to do is touch him. All I need to do is get in his presence and things will change. That's how I'm feeling today right now with all this information, a combustion chamber just want to blow out, blow out in a great way. That's why I said the key to leadership is trust. See, people follow you because they trust you, ladies and gentlemen. People follow you because they trust you. And if you violate that trust, you lose the account. If you violate that trust, you lose the account. So I want you guys to hold on to that. So, so let's look at that, right? So if you violate that trust, you lose the account. So then as we dive in, so you are a safe as the account that you protect. Ooh. You are a safe as the account that you protect. So then you need to ask yourself, am I protecting my account? Am I protecting my account? See, what you're doing right now some of the things you, you're doing might be threatening that account. That's why I said ask if you're protecting that account. Some of the things that you're doing might be threatening that account. If you're just joining me, we're talking about that account of trust. So some of you, you're saying, okay, so we talk about, well, restoring your image. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me go back a little bit. If some of you. You heard me talk about I live a life in where. I follow the greatest teacher. I believe that we read so much, we study all these amazing books, but we forget that the greatest teacher that walked the earth is Yeshua. And if we're going to study, whether we like it or not, we should study the things that we even want to pass out and say, I don't believe that. Well, I think you should study to show yourself approved because if you're going to say you don't like something, you should study it because you don't know it. Don't say you don't like it if you don't know what it is, right? So, so according to my studies and according to what I've learned on the way, when we talked about image, I said, when the creator created this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful space that we're all in, one of the first things he said, let us make man in the likeness and image. Likeness and image. And then dominion came after. So I'm doing a little bit of recap in this teaching because I want to make sure folks understand what we're talking about restoring your image. We're talking about your character. How do we restore it? Because people are all stuck on leadership, being on top, being a winner. But no one says, well, when things happen, how do we restore that? So you got to understand if we're operating on dominionship, then we forgot the primary factor. 
we forgot the primary factor because the first thing he said is, let us make man in the likeness and image. Dominion came after. So then that means he knew what he was doing when he said likeness and image because he knows that image represents your character. And if the image is destroyed, then guess what is destroyed, ladies and gentlemen? Come on, somebody, if you're with me, type it in the chat. If the image is destroyed, what is destroyed? Because if I said the image represents your what, then what is destroyed? So I need you to understand for those who are, are, are just joining, right? Right? So if that image is destroyed, if the image it represents the character, so guess what? You have to stand tall as an individual and represent that character. That's why the image is so important. And the reason why he did that is because he knew that there will always be a test. I talked about that. I said, that's why right. I, I showed you guys that there will always be a test. They must be a test because the test is what most of us, we said, well, without no test, there's no testimony. Well, because you got to get to another level and you must always have tests that will reinforce your character that will then allow the people to continue to reinforce that trust that they're giving to you, that account, right? So this is extremely important. So that's why I said, so are you, are you holding it safe, that account? Are you keeping that account safe? Or what might you be doing that may damage that account? What might you be doing that may damage that account? What are you secretly doing that can cancel the account? What are you secretly doing? See, this is extremely important. What are you secretly doing? See, it's too often when people of influence and power get accused. You know, you're, you're, you're influential. Oh, wow. In, the, the people of influence and power, they get accused of something that they actually did. But then they're trying to deny it. Clean it up. But then we're in an age now that everything is digitized. So then when it's digitally shown, now they're in a position of, oh my gosh. Yes, uh, yes, I did it. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, that's me, uh, that's me. Um, but you guys should just forgive me. See, this is what we're talking about. Because we've been taught to win. We've taught, we're taught to become great leaders and be on top. But then, a miscarriage happened, a misstep happened. And when that misstep happened, a lot of individuals, a lot of leaders, a lot of people that we put our trust in, they fail horribly, ladies and gentlemen. They fail horribly, most of them, okay? Because they deny it and then it comes out that it's them. So you want to ask yourself, so what am I doing that can cancel that account? What am I doing that can jeopardize that account? So even when you you are unplugged, a lot of times people say, well, no, I, I stay in the shadows. I, you know, I don't do nothing. I really, I don't go nowhere. I, I'm, I'm easy. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, even when you're unplugged in regards to your phones, if you said, okay, my phone, don't worry about that. I, 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 I turn off location. I, I do this. I do that. Ladies and gentlemen, come on. We're in a technological age. There's almost nothing you can do today that's not known. So when we are gonna step in to leadership, when we're gonna step in to a position and say, we wanna win, I need you to understand how important when the creator said, let us make man in a likeness and image. See, because your image and your character is not private. Your image and your character is not private. So for those who like to say, no, I like to be private. No, there's nothing private. You got to get out of the house every day. You know, I was talking to someone earlier this week. I said, guys, when you get up, you got to wash your face. You got to brush your teeth. You got to take a shower. What do you think you're doing? You are preparing that image. You are fixing it up. So that you can get out the door or you can get in front of your phone or, or your laptop or whatever it is that your work requires. But you are fixing up that image. So what I'm saying to you is that your image is never private. It is always public. And I know somebody needs to hear that because you're saying, well, now I'm living reclusive. I'm not. No, ladies and gentlemen, you don't live 
in a world or on a planet by yourself. That means that you must always be mindful of that account. If you guys are with me, type one in the chat. If you guys are with me, type one in the chat. So the currency of leadership is trust. The currency of leadership is trust. And we can only buy leadership success with the trust people give to us. See that? Leadership, leadership success can only come to you by the trust that people give to you. Because without the trust, then there's no leadership success. Without the trust, there's no leadership success. So let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about the power of that leadership trust. Let's talk about that for a second, because this is extremely important. And I know that there's somebody that, that is saying, man, I needed to hear this. Because whatever I take in, I always said, let me apply it to me. As I learn on a process, I said, I need to apply it to me. I need to see how much better I can become. I, I, I'm a student always. How can I tweak this to be a better person? Because first, I need to be able to trust me. And not just say, hey, you trust you. No, put the things in place that requires me to trust me. See, I got to trust me for others to be able to feel that energy that will allow them in turn, to see who I am and feel who I am, to be able to start depositing into my trust account. Come on, people. Remember, it'll take trust 50, 30, whatever, 20 years to build. Years. And then it could be canceled in a second. It could be destroyed in a second. I need you to understand how important that is. And a lot of times when things are happening, we like to say, well, come on now, I did this, um, so, so, so you just can't forgive me? For my brothers and sisters that are listening to me, I need you guys to, to take this in and understand how important this is. Because this applies in every area of your life. But I just did this. Why can't she just forgive me? You've got to understand something. It took time, that deposit, well, it was being deposited bit by bit by bit because you were doing the things that was earning the trust. And then you did something to have that unwavering trust to start happening. And now you are feeling, well, it's been a year. Why haven't things changed? Hold on a minute. How long did it take before it was built? Come on, somebody. If you're with me, drop 10 in the chat. If you're with me, drop 10 in the chat. How long did it take to build? You just believe because you did something that you should be good. That's not how it works. Because you got to develop this trust account. See, when you start talking about the power of leadership, it is impossible to lead those who do not trust you. Come on, somebody. It is impossible to lead those who do not trust you. You know why? Because they will start to sabotage you. How many, how many of y'all have been in some crowd or been in a job or around some people or maybe starting an organization and they don't see your vision? And because they didn't see your vision, guess what happened? They now like, I ain't feeling him. I ain't feeling her. And everything starts going bad. And here's what you're doing. Woo! For my people who like to always use, well, you know, maybe just the enemies against me. The enemy against me right now. So I don't know what the enemy up to doing. No, you know, enemy up against you. Is that that account is, is wavering? Because you moved into a space that 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 leadership trust. Those people are not on your level. Remember, we talked about we talked about being on a level mentally that allows the same type of people to be gravitating to you. So you stepped into a place that's impossible to lead those people who do not trust you. They will sabotage you. The minute you walk away from the job or leave, they're over there planning for you. See, you'll be amazed at what they're cooking up because trust is essential to leadership. Leadership is essential to trust. So trust is a deposit on the leadership account. 
but it's by the followers over a long period of time. By people that's around you over a long period of time. This is why when you can say, I'm gonna just call my sister, I'm gonna just call my brother, I'm gonna call my mama and them because they know me. You figured, well, because she birthed me. No, it's not because she birthed you. It is because there was a period of time. The birth happened. She already know what she carried. Or your brother, you came and you met him. Or he came and met you. But there was a period of time which trust was being deposited into the account because they were seeing who you are. They know who you are. That is why. But we, all of us on this call right now, we know we got some siblings that we'll call and they're like, don't call me. Don't call me. Because you had that period of time that you might have been around them, but you're not around them for a long period of time. So there have been no deposit in that account. So that trust goes but so far. If you're with me, somebody put 11 in the chat. <laughs> if you're with me, somebody put 11 in the chat. If you're with me, somebody put 11 in the chat. So let me define trust to you, right? Because this is trust. How I want to look at trust right now, it's like an equation, right? And I remember I told you about the most high will always, you will always be test. You got to be tested. You got to be tested. So look at trust like this. If you're writing it down, trust is like test and, and you put a long line. It's like test over time equal trust. Tests over time equal trust. You must be tested in order. Let me, let me let me slow up for a minute because somebody might have been, you might have said, well, you lost me a minute, Boston. You lost me a minute. But let me let me speak to somebody real quick. <laughs> See, your father, who is the creator, you expect somebody done twist up your mind in your earlier learning to say that, well, he just loves me. He loves all of us. So no matter what I do, I'm good under his grace. Let me stop you real quick. Let me stop you. Because maybe you don't know my father. Maybe you don't know the father that you serve him. I said test over time equal trust. In order for him to trust you, you must be tested. You must be tried and tested. You have to go through the test in order for him to trust you. He cannot trust you if you weren't tested. You said, I like diamonds. I want to wear diamonds. But you believe if you snap your finger, diamonds just appear. See, diamonds have to go through a process. And that process takes a long period of time and a lot of pressure before it can become diamonds. I'm hoping somebody is following me right now. So you got to understand that it's a test, but there's a period of time being able for you to get the trust. So if you went through the test and you withstand the test, then I can trust you because I see that you're still standing because you've been tested over and over and over and over. And to every level, there must be a test. Come on, somebody. To every level, it must be a test. So when some of you, you're over here saying that, well, mm -mm, I'm good. What is this about? I thought I got this new position. They pay me $180,000 a year. I'm good. Oh, I came up with my, my, my double masters and I deserve. You deserve what? You went to school. You got the degree. Now you're, the degree got you in the door. And you think that's all it is? No. See, they must be a test because when you get in the door, you're getting in the door of unfamiliar territory that requires knowledge to know you. So this is why when you step into a new organization, they have a probation period because you must go through a test to see if we're going to keep you or if you're what we think you are and you can add value to who we are and our vision and where we're going. If somebody put me type one, come on, somebody. You got to understand test. The equation is test. Come on. Over time. Equal trust. Come on, somebody. So testing a person over a long period of time is how you build that trust. Testing a person over a long period of time is how you build that trust. That is extremely important. That's why when people say, well, I, I just met her and I feel like we've known each other forever. Yeah, you're like minds. But I always tell people, I, you don't really know them until you go through a test. So for those who like to grab friends so quick, you don't know until you go through a test because they must be a test and it has to be over a period of time. Come on. 
You got to stay with me here. This is why you cannot stand up again, right? In front of an audience when you have been disqualified. When you were that leader and you have misstepped and things happened and now it came out. You were denying it and it came out and now you're there like, okay, you cannot stand up in front of, a, 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 of an audience. I want you guys to understand something. From now on, don't go in front of people and just say, hey, um, trust me. You know, when, when we when you, people come to your office or somebody's trying to sell you something or you meet someone, they say, trust me. Well, I can't trust you because I don't know you. You have not been tested over no period of time. So you can't ask me to trust you. I got to know that you've been tested over a period of time. This is why when organizations are, 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 are selling or giving you a pitch, and they're talking about their longevity and they're talking about what they've gone through and they're talking about these different things over a period of time. They're showing you that they've been tried and tested and you should look at what they are presenting because they are trustworthy. Come on, somebody, type some sevens. Type some sevens if you're following me. Type some sevens if you're following me. They're saying they are trustworthy. This is extre extremely important for all of you to understand. Because this is over a period of time. And we must understand what that means. So we have to stop using that term because it's impossible. It's either somebody trusts you or they don't. It's either they trust you or they don't. And that is extremely important for us as we as step into the space of leadership or step into the space of, oh, well, my image is, is great. Well, how do you know? Because there's things that we must do to work on the image, as we talked about in, 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 the, in the first segment of, 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 of this uh, treatment. And now we're talking about how do we lift it up? See? We're talking about how we lift it up. I want somebody to reflect for a second. Reflect for a second. Just give yourself a second of reflection. Give yourself a second of reflection and ask, is my account stable? Is my account stable? stable because a lot of times we, we we all run into situations in life or have before when we have our bank accounts and we're like oh man that uh, oh that check came back oh my gosh what, what happened here how quick how quick did you fix it in which manner did you fix it so ask yourself for a second how stable is my account how stable is my account how do you deal with the failure under pressure? How do you deal with it? How do you deal with that failure? Because it's important, it's important to maintain consistency. It's important to have integrity. It's important to have candor and wisdom. It's important as a leader to have these things in order to be surviving the battles and the attacks and the criticism that will come on you. It's important to have those things as a leader, as an individual, because this is your image and your image is your character, your character is your image. So it is not private, it is public. Everything about you is public. I wanna make sure you guys understand this. So you have to maintain that image that represents your character. Come on people. So what do we do when we, we said, okay, wow, you said, they, they said, oh man, America loves the train wreck, but what mostly, mostly America loves, they said, is, is the comeback story. Why? Because we trust people who survive. Come on, on, somebody. We trust people who survive. So have you survived the tests? Are you surviving the tests? Are you quitting in the middle of the tests? Is the storm over you and you're saying, let me seek shelter or let me continue to push on? Because people trust people who survive. You continue pushing. The one who run and seek shelter in the storm is still within the storm. The one who continue to push, even though the debris is moving, even though the wind is forceful, but they continue to push, they continue to push, they continue to push, they continue to push. When you look back, ladies and gentlemen, the storm is behind you. 
There's brighter days that was ahead of you. Now you've walked into it. Now you're a survivor because you survived the test. So now your trust account is strong, it's fortified. Because now I can trust you because you have gone through this test and you've been tried and you came out victorious. This is extremely important for us to understand. This is why when you look at history, the kind of people that we can say that while we trust, while we trust Dr. Martin Luther King, he stood for something, he went through things, he stood the test of time. We can say we trust Rosa Parks. We can say we trust Nelson Mandela. We can talk about this, why? Because these individuals, they stood the test of time. They went through it and, they, and the trial did not break them. It did not allow them to change their story, but they stood firm because they knew that the more that the test is coming and they stand firm that the account is being built and the more the account is being built, it's being fortified. Now that it's being fortified, when they come out, they were going through and the debris was hitting them and they were looking rough. But after they come out, there's this shiny thing. They're polished. Now they're a diamond. Come on, somebody. Now they're a diamond. And everyone is glaring. Woo! Love how it looks. But see, some of us, we don't understand or we don't want to go through the tests. Okay? We don't want to go through the tests. See, one of the things I believe that as a leader, as people, one of the things that we should do often, one of the things that we should do often is we should drop to our knees every day. We should drop to our knees, ladies and gentlemen, every day. Why? Some of you might be saying, what does he mean? You, we should drop to our knees. We should drop to our knees and be grateful and be thankful. Don't say to me that, well, no, 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 no. I walked around. I was laying down doing it. No, you should drop to your knees or you should just prostrate and give glory to a power beyond yourself. Some of you might be hearing it and you might say, he's trying to be church. You know, I'm not trying to be church. I'm talking a power beyond yourself because you know that, guess what? I'm not here alone. There's things bigger than me, things that I know not of. So I should drop and give glory to that which allowed me to rise in the morning. I think if leaders could understand that, people in positions that we respect and love could understand that, then when you drop and give glory to something that's more powerful than you, to understand that there's a creator of this universe, a creator of all things, then guess what? You can rise in the mindset of greatness. So one of the things I realize in my life, I tell people straight up and down, I'm so straight with it. I'm so straight with it, I said, do not trust the leader that cannot fall to his knees and give glory to the creator. Do not trust the leader that cannot fall to his or her knees and give glory to the creator. Because see, here is the thing. Here is the thing. I want you guys to understand. This is extremely important. When he talked about image, <clears throat> excuse me. When he talked about image, what I realized in leadership in every area of leadership, whether you go to a job, uh, whether it's a mom, a dad, whether it's the law of the land, the word fear is very important. The word fear is very important. This is why when the creator talked about fear, that is a, a, it's the beginning of understanding when he, when he talked about for those who fear him, now, see, when we as in the people today hear that word fear, we start talking about, well, I'm not afraid of nobody. No. That fear represents respect. Respect of the image. Come on, somebody. That fear represents respect of the image. Let, me say, let us make man in the likeness and image. Now, when, when I need you guys to understand the importance of man. Right, I said that before to you all on calls that we have done. <clears throat> there's, there, there was a, there's not a man and a woman that was created. There is man that was created. According to texts, according to my studies, there is man that was created. Man, not man and woman, man. And off of man, male and female was created. Somebody might need to hear that because I think you might've been reading wrong. 
See, mind is the species, right? Let us make mind in the likeness and image. So I need you to understand something. And, and then there's male and female. So, so now when you start talking about understanding the word fear, okay, image represents your character. Lack of fear simply means that you will not respect the character nor the image you're carrying. That is why we have so many broken leaders today, so many broken leadership. When we start talking about leadership, remember, it starts in the home. Every one of you that's hearing my voice are leaders. You were created to be a leader, but a leader, but dominion that came after likeness and image was not over man or woman but over all things outside of man or woman. So as a leader, we are leaders in different area and skills that was given to us. Come on, somebody. Different areas and skills that was given to us. So you are a leader, but now there's dominion that you have over all things under you, not dominion over me, me not having dominion over you, but because the gift that has made room for me allowed me to be a leader in teaching. And your gift might allow you to be a leader in serving medical needs, serving children, in serving, dealing with the environment, different forms of leadership. And a leader must first have fear to understand his image and characteristics. Are you guys with me? If you're with me, type with me. I don't want to lose you all. If you're with me, type with me. I told you that this, this, this topic is so heavy that this treatment that we, we have so much to really talk about it when we're talking about restoring the image of, 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 of our broken character. How do we restore it? This is extremely important, right? That's why I said I want you to just visualize that picture of someone kneeling. This should be you. Visualize that picture of someone kneeling. You should be kneeling. We need more leaders in that position. We need more leaders kneeling where that people can see them and say, where did they come from? Who are they? Why are they so knowledgeable? Why are they so receptive? Why are they so understanding? Why are they so knowledgeable? Because they speak it with wisdom. And how does that come to understanding? But you require to be on your knees to fear your creator to understand that your character is your image and your image represents your character. And that's why it would always be tested. So never believe that when you arrive into a space that you have arrived. Don't get comfortable. More is coming. So you've been told, people say, oh, no, you're trying to jinx me. What are you trying to talk about? I worked all my life for this. Now I'm making $500,000 a year. I'm making a million dollars a year. I'm making $100,000, whatever that position is. And you feel that is it. No, there's more coming. Because see, if you're made in my likeness and image and you're to hold on to what is given to you, then you must be tried and show that you can withstand the trial that I can trust you to give you even more. So right now, if you're feeling like I have gone through some things and I've arrived at a station that's beyond me, but I'm really standing still and, 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 and going through the test of time and I've arrived, but I know that there will be more and I need more. Somebody type more in the chat for me. Type more in the chat for me. See, we, we, the, the, the creator doesn't like whips. You've got to understand, leaders cannot be whipped. Those who stand to govern us in our countries cannot be whipped because we always have to be ready for what is going to come. We have to be prepared and that comes through the test. Come on now. So one of the things I like to say is, oh Lord, allow me not to disappoint you. Allow me not to disappoint the people. It's one of my prayers. Allow me not to disappoint you. Allow me not to disappoint the people. See, if you don't fear the law, 
you go out there and you act a fool, you get yourself in trouble. You don't fear your parents, you don't listen to them, you go outside and you act a fool. See, fear, it's common to fortify your character and your image that will make you a great leader. For those who do not fear, this is why the broken leadership that is existing today, it's happening because of the people that lack fear to the creator, to the laws that are governing and that starts in the home. So I want you guys to hold on to this because we really have to dive in and there's so much more for us to talk about that. There's so much more for us to dive in so that we'll understand how, how, how important this is. See, when you're dealing with people, I want you guys to go with this. When, when you're dealing with people, when you're serving and you're teaching the masses, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of the times people look at you and they say it's because of him, because he's like that, because she's like that. They think it's easy. You think, wow, he's doing so, such an amazing job. When you look at people like myself, when you look at the doctors or the nurses and, and, and the educators and the firemen, you think they're doing such an amazing job. But here's the thing. What you don't know is that you're putting so much pressure on that person. There's so much pressure on that person who stand in line with leadership. There's so much pressure. What is that pressure saying? That pressure is saying, well, you better not fail us. Come on, somebody. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. You put that pressure. Oh, I respect him. I love him. Look at what he's doing. I love the way they're leading this country. I love the way how they're creating these laws. I love the way she's doing it at her job. And, and that is, you better not fail. You better not mess up. This is what we're talking about, that test. People have no idea what leadership is when you decide to pursue it. They have no idea what leadership is when you, when you decide to pursue it. The leaders should make it the normal to constantly ask for guidance and not to mess up. Make it your norm. Ask for guidance and to not mess up. You have to make it your norm. It needs to be an affirmation. It needs to be innate. It should be indented in your subconscious. You should always be asking for guidance. Always asking, allow me not to mess up. This is extremely important because if you don't know these things, if you don't have that fear, then ladies and gentlemen, you will end up as the leaders who are always failing. And when you fail, no one has taught us how to rise back up. See, sometimes before we make decisions, you may want to ask yourself, well, and this is really key. This is really key as you guys go on today. When when you decide to make decisions, ask yourself, this decision I'm about to make, will I enjoy remembering this decision that I'm about to make? This move that I'm about to make, will I enjoy remembering it? I've stepped into a place where I'm a leader in my supervisory job. I'm a leader as a COO. I'm a leader as a manager. I have an organization where I'm building a, a team. You know, When you're about to make a decision, ask yourself, Will I enjoy remembering this decision? And if you know that that decision you're making, you will not enjoy remembering it, then guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You don't make it. See, there's some self-checks that we must do as leaders. As I talked about being on your knees and asking not to mess up, there's some self-check that you must apply to yourself. So a leader sits still and think before they act. Because if that decision that you made is going to be one that brings turmoil, then you cannot make that decision. You have to think about everything when you step into that role of a leader. Come on. That's leadership, ladies and gentlemen. That is leadership. So what I want to do, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to give you guys a little bit just a, a, a few little things that we should tap into. Uh, I want to do like a quick 
little recap before, because I know we'll have to continue this session, right? I know we'll have to continue this session, but I want to do a quick little recap so you guys will understand, as, as I spoke to you all from before, I said, when it comes down to that trust account, I said, you can't buy trust, uh, you can't pray for trust, uh, you cannot demand trust, right? We talked about that, and I want to make sure that you guys have that. I want to make sure you guys understand how important it is, because trust must be earned. It's imperative that we understand how important that is, because a lot of the time, some of us, we don't understand this. I told you, we talked about the values, right? We talked about values, and, and we talked about the power of values. So for those who might have missed that first segment, right? You guys can go on Spotify and 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 you can definitely listen into uh, restoring your image. That's the first uh, treatment that we did, so you will have a full understanding of how important it is that to have those values when it represents the image. Right? We talked about this. This is extremely important, and we talked about the value of leadership as well. I spoke to, to you all about the value of leadership. I talked about uh, uh, the value of faithfulness. I talked about the value of self-control, the value of steadiness. We talked about these things, integrity towards your, um, the people you serve. We talked about that, right? So I want you guys to take this information, whatever you've documented, and I want you guys to go over it, spend some time with it. Let it resonate in your spirit and see what makes sense for you. If it all makes sense, I say rub it on like a cream, like lotion. Absorb it. Feel it. Bask in the ambiance of it. And run with it. For those who may say, well, ah, whatever, I'm good. Well, then you're good. You're stopped and you're stuck right where you are for you. And guess what? I applaud you for wherever you believe you are. For those who want to say, I'm going to take this portion, I'm going to apply it to my life, and I'm going to take this portion and apply it to this, then I say, whatever the information is, review the information. Talk to yourself in the reviewing and your creator and, and your constituents around you. If you want to talk to some folks that might have heard this call or, or let them hear it and say, wow, this is some information that I've been really learning and uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, if that's what you feel. But I want you to understand it's very important when it comes down to our image. Our image is our character and our image is not private. So for those who've been leading a life saying that, no, but I'm private, you're not. There's nothing private about you. Life can never be private. That's why he said likeness and image, because he knew exactly that the image would represent the character and the image must be tested. He knew this. And when you, you hear image, for those who like to take the image and say, well, oh, I look like God. No, you do not. Likeness and image didn't say look. It talks about the characteristics of the creator, the like-mindedness. So that's why we talked about the values, ladies and gentlemen. And it's important for you guys to take this and take charge of it and run with it throughout this week. So I challenge you guys to hold on to this information. Take this information and store it up. Give it out to whoever you feel you need to give it out to, whatever does resonate with you. Chant what you believe you need to chant on your spirit to say, well, I am, I am whole in me. Give me the strength to be in you and not to mess up because I stepped into a space of leadership. And let your week be a week of power. Let your superpower reign. Understand that your purpose is nothing to search for because it's already embedded in you. So for those who got to think, well, I got to go search because I don't know what I want to be. No, it's in you already. The prepared mind will receive what is already there. So receive the information. Get yourself prepared and run out into the world and be awesomely blessed. I thank you guys for joining me today. This has been truly, truly amazing just to have you guys on this segment we will continue this segment, ladies and gentlemen, because there's so much information. And of course, I want to respect your time. I am grateful that you decided that you wanted to stop in here today, that you allowed your bus to stop at the Mr. Boston's Leadership Summit so that we can have a dialogue. And now you can continue on your way filled up because some of you, your tank might have been empty. 
And now you got that premium petrol to go ahead and finish the journey. So I'm so grateful for you guys joining us. I love you guys. Continue to be blessed in every step that you made. And don't forget to join me every Mondays, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I always want you guys to tag at least three friends and tell them to join on at the Mr. Boston Leadership Summit. I love you guys. You guys continue to be blessed and have an awesome, awesome week. Bye-bye.